Welcome to podcast 14. Yeah, uh, yes. Still no fancy intro music. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to continue along uh, with uh, some of the requests that I had. And I, I have gotten quite a bit of requests with, um, Ken, why don't you talk about the throttle? You never talk about the throttle. Well, you know, I, it's funny. The, the throttle part's actually the easy part. And we spend so much time with the bike on, on entry spend so much time on the brakes and our eyes and our trajectory is to get us in that position to accelerate. And quite, quite honestly, the acceleration is pretty much the easy part. Um, it, it, it's just putting ourselves into that position. So really what we're going to talk about today, though, is the throttle in our throttle hand and how fast should our throttle hand move? And it's, it's, a, it's a tricky question because um, you hear it all the time. Dude, yeah, dude, I just pin the thing and let the TC take over. I, ah, man, you got to whack the throttle open. Yeah, well, that's really not what's happening. Well it, well, it can happen once or twice, and then after you pick yourself up off the ground or, or your buddies pick you up off the ground, um, then you see how that goes. And if you, don't, if you don't quite believe that, then go take your XR100 out and um, come around the corner and whack the throttle on and see how well that goes. So, throttle hand, how fast should it move? Where this all starts, it go, right, go, go back to our order of the sport and our fundamentals. Where this all comes starts, it starts from our motor, the, our motor controls. And you, you first have got, you have to have the ability to adjust. You have to have the ability for your motor controls, your hand to operate in a fashion so you understand um, how slow or how fast your hand has to move. So it all starts there, the, that, that ability right there. The second part of it is, when can you accelerate? And I, I think one of the great things that, that Nick Iannacci talks about um, is, so when can you accelerate? When you can take away lean angle and see your exit. Yeah, Nick does a great job with explaining that, and that's something that I'll use here. So when can you accelerate? When you can see your exit and when you can take away lean angle. And do you see how that suddenly fits into any corner? A 90 degree corner, yeah, you're going to see your exit sooner. So if you can see your exit, take away a lean angle earlier, then you can go. Big 180 degree corner, if you can't see your exit and you can't take away lean angle, well, then you can't go. So that right there will start to get your brain thinking about when can you accelerate. And, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to racing at the highest levels, uh, you know, even, even at a high level of, of um, club racing, What's the goal? The goal, what's the quickest way around the racetrack? You see how all this comes back? Is the quickest way around the racetrack is who can be a wide open throttle the longest? So we have to place ourselves in that position to make that happen, and we have to have our hand be able to, to, to move in a way to make that happen. So you start thinking about, all right, when can I be a wide open throttle? And we can start working backwards from there. Where that process all starts is on initial throttle. And if you open the throttle too quickly, and I've seen data, I've seen data from, from very, very high level uh, racers. The initial throttle, I'm sorry guys, you people think, you, you can say whatever you want, the initial throttle is a lot slower and smoother than you think. When I say initial throttle, I'm talking one, one to 10%. Actually, to even break it down further, it's probably in the one to three to 4% range. This is something that um, I really admire Bradley Smith for talking about. Bradley Smith says when he thinks about this sport, he goes, the two biggest things in this sport for me is my last 50 feet of braking and my first 50 feet of acceleration. That's your initial throttle. So that 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 percent, how you start to load the tire, how you load the suspension, how you make sure your trajectory is set, that's what sets up the, the, the ability to get to wide open throttle. So how do you get to wide open throttle early? Your initial throttle has to be slower and smoother than you think. So you can look at this as, all right, now we can think about when do I want to accelerate? When I can see my exit and when I can take away lean angle. How my initial throttle is. My initial throttle is what sets up this, this whole process. Now the next step is once you roll the throttle on, you don't want to have to give it up. So your trajectory has to be set. And I'll talk about some report cards in just a minute, but if you go to your throttle at bang, 30 or 40% and go, wow, that was too much, 
for that radius, too much for that trajectory, too much for the tire's grip, and you have to roll back off, your initial throttle's too much. So you, that's why you want to have that nice, linear, slow movement on your throttle hand on how you get to 100%. So once you go to the throttle to drive off the corner, you don't want to have to give it up. So now let's look at some report cards with that and some of the things that you can do to, to, to mitigate that. So if your initial throttle is jerky, so you, if you, you oh man, my bike needs to be ma mapped. I've ridden literally almost every stock sport bike available. And yes, there are some bikes out there that have some initial throttle issues. I still can ride them. I still have problems with them. I just have to be more conscientious of my one to two, one to two or three or four percent throttle. I have to tighten up my stomach. I have to take weight off of my hands to allow my hand to move slower. So if your initial throttle is jerky, yeah, there's some mapping things that you can do. But guess what? You need to slow your hand up. Uh, period. That's all there is to it. So slow your hand up. Tighten up your core. Take some weight off the hands to make that happen. So. If you have to give up the throttle on the exits, so you go to the throttle too hard or too early, and you have to give it back up, that's something that you can look at. You can go to the throttle early, but you're going to have to go to it really slowly. So if you go to it too early and go to it at, at 5, 10, 15, 20% of throttle, and then you go, oh crap, that was too much, you got to back, back, back off, well, maybe you could have held the throttle at 5 or 6 or 7%, it slowly built that throttle until you could take away lean angle and see your exit. So if you're having to give up the throttle, your trajectory is not set, but more than likely your hand's moving too fast as well. Start running wide on exits. Again, your throttle hand's moving too quick, right? If, that is if your trajectory is set, your apex is correct, your body's correct, and you keep doing that, going to the throttle too hard and running wide. Again, that initial throttle's got to be slower, initial, that initial um, one to five percent has got to be smoother and slower than you think. The tire spins early. Right, so you go to the throttle and you go to it and rip. As soon as you go to the throttle, the tire spins. Then you're seeing the same thing. Same thing with bikes at wheelie. I've ridden, I, I don't, I've ridden countless clients' bikes that say, oh, my bike won't stop wheeling. My bike won't stop wheeling. I get on the bike, I can't make it wheelie. What they're doing is they're actually going to the throttle later than I am and more abruptly than I am, and then the bike wheelies. I'll go to the throttle slightly earlier and slower in a linear fashion. I'll get the wide open throttle sooner than they will, and the bike won't wheelie. So, you having wheelie problems like that? Yes, I know we have wheelie control and the bikes are so fast nowadays, but still, you have to look at when the bike wheelies and what the trajectory is. So, a lot of times wheelie problems come from that as well. So, how do we fix some of these things? And the first one I already kind of gave you a little bit of a hint on that one is your motor controls, right? Being in a position to move your hand slower. First, we, we've got to be able to understand our, hand, our, our initial, think about your initial 5% of throttle, your initial 5%, how you set the tire, how you set the suspension, how, how you let everything load. That, that initial part is a huge deal. So... Being, being more precise with that will get you to wide open throttle sooner. Having less weight on your hands. Use your core. Tighten up your core. I can almost guarantee most core, most initial throttle issues are because there's too much weight on your hands. There's, your lower body's not engaged. Tighten up your stomach muscles as you go to the throttle and you'll see how much easier that ends up being, being that. Um, Another good report card or something we can take a look at to fix that is not stopping, not stopping um, once you drive on the throttle. So if you're pausing on the throttle, you go to the throttle at 5, 10, 15, 20%, and then you realize, oh, you pause, we have to look and see why you're pausing. Are you going to run off the track? Is it an issue where your, your, your comfort level is not where it needs to be? Think about, okay, what can I do to mitigate that? I can use my eyes. I can use my body. I can, I can tighten up my core so I can make my hand move slower so I can keep that throttle hand moving in one linear fashion. Another thing to look at is how you're getting to the edge of the track. If you know your trajectory is set and you know uh, your body position's set and you're not using all the track on the exits, well then guess what? You've got some room. What a great problem. You can get, you can get, to, the, um, you can get to wide open throttle sooner. Notice how I said you can get to wide open throttle sooner 
not go to the throttle sooner. You guys realize there's a massive, massive difference between where you go to the throttle and where you get the wide open throttle. They are two completely, completely different things. In this case, if where you went to the throttle was okay, your body's good, your trajectory's good, but you still have track left over, then you can open the throttle up quicker. In other words, you can move your hand a little bit, a little bit faster. So, the throttle hand, really, very, very interesting. How fast should the throttle hand move? Well, that throttle hand should move as fast as, as um, that radius of the corner dictates. How fast that exit, uh, how fast that egg, that that um, that exit of the track allows you to move. Yes, we want to have our throttle to move, get the wide open throttle as soon as we can. But we also have to be able to take away lean angle as as well. The initial throttle, I know I've said it, I'll say it again, the initial throttle is a bigger deal than you think. Think about that with Bradley Smith, right? The first 50 feet of my acceleration zone is what I'm concerned with, which is that initial throttle. And the idea is that, that if you can let that build, let the, let the trajectory come, then you can get the wide open throttle sooner. Give yourself some report cards on this. Is my, is my initial throttle jerky? Um, am I giving up the throttle? Am I running wide? Is the tire spinning? Is my bike wheeling? And then you can use start some of these things that I talked about to try to be able to help those issues. So throttle hand. Yeah, we want our throttle hand to move as fast as we can, but we have to take all of these other things in, into account uh, and be able to work on those as well. So work on your initial throttle. You can do it in your car, right? If you're driving your car, yeah, get on an overpass or get on, a, on, a, on an on-ramp and you get on the freeway, yeah. You can go to a little bit of throttle and watch what the thing does. It's very simple. You go to the throttle too hard, look how quick your radius opens up. We want our radius to open up, but we want our radius to open up at the right time. Practice this in your car. Practice working your eyes connecting your eyes and your motor controls. Practice connecting your eyes and your throttle together. Get them working to parallel each other, and I think you'll be um, uh, very happy with the results.